Redditors who were poor as kids, what things were normal to you when you were poor growing up? Fast food being a massive treat, intense anxiety whenever school would force us to buy things, like class t-shirts or field trip admission costs, even if it was $6. I remember my dad saying something like public education is free, we don't have to give them any money, so there was no point even trying to get money from them, so embarrassing. I never missed anything though, must have had good teachers, or other parents looking out for the poor kids. Blankets on the windows to keep the heat in. Or using the oven to heat up the house. I grew up in Serbia in the 90s very poor when hyperinflation hit. Eating a bread and sugar sandwich. Only being able to afford milk for my little brother, one glass per day. My dad giving me enough money so I could go to the store to buy a single banana. Bread loaf literally costing 2 cents. Wearing the same clothes for a week straight. Taking a shower once a week and having to boil your water in a large pot. Sharing a school bag with my sister. Our house had nylon and duct tape where some windows were supposed to be. This especially sucked during storms. Planting and harvesting our own vegetables. Sealing some house cracks with mud. Walking everywhere and asking for rides because we didn't own a car. Firewood. And only one room of the house having heat. Coca-Cola was a luxury, if I saw someone drinking coke, I thought they were rich, being poor sucked, and so did the Yugoslavian civil wars. In relation to the hyperinflation, my dad always says you'd get your paycheck and by the time you arrived home it was worth half. Not wearing shoes in the summer, you got shoes for school, they lasted until the end of the school year, then you went barefoot. It's not as bad as it sounds because we lived in the country. Also your feet get callus pretty fast. Freaking grandma's cottage had a gravel driveway. But not like small gravel or pea sized aggregate. It was big pebbles. And crossing that was always crappy. Just the odd one would be poking up right to cut into the ball or heel if you stepped on it. So you had to be careful. Then the sun would bake it. And now you have to move fast because it burns. I got my first summer job when I was 12 or so, and any time I managed to build up a nice chunk of change my mom would borrow the money. She always paid it back, I think, but it wasn't an option. She just took it when needed. My allowance or good grade money or shoveling snow money that got borrowed and replaced with IOUS specifically from my stepmom never got returned. You're a lucky fella. Powdered milk. No AC. My parents sometimes skipped meals so us kids could eat. Clothes were hand-me-downs or from Walmart. And only for school starting. No wastefulness. Rarely eat out. No name brands. Antenna TV. No cable. No healthcare health insurance. No dentist visits. I started working and buying my own clothes at age 14. Our home was falling apart around us. My dad tried to keep it together. Sort of. Oh, and my parents never being home because they each worked multiple jobs. I could go on. Buying the absolute cheapest item there was of something. Wearing shoes with holes in them constantly. Dressing super weird because everything was handed down to you. Blocking off whole sections of the house in winter to save money by heating only one or two rooms. Heating water on the stove so you could bathe with hot water. Buying markdown meat that was graying or slightly green in spots. Burn scars on the back of my legs for trying to stand too close to the kerosene heater in the winter. Paper food stamps. My mom sending me to the neighbors houses to ask to borrow things like dish soap. I hated the going to neighbors to borrow things. I didn't really get that they were in the same boat and you help out where you can when you can. Hiding any nice present you got from wealthier family members because people would be about you having it if they ever saw you using food stamps. Everything was homemade. Oatmeal is cheaper than cereal. Lots of beans and rice. No AC. Government cheese. Powdered eggs and milk. Wick cereal. Canned meat in big cans with no paper label. Just the USDA beef or whatever on the front. I kind of developed a taste for it. Farina. To this day I cannot eat anything that reminds me of the texture of government farina. Powdered everything. Anything that could be powdered and stored in a box. Was. My friends didn't believe that powdered eggs existed. That you didn't get clothing or shoes that you didn't absolutely need. It's foreign to me to this day to buy a piece of clothing I don't require, but just want. 
Me too. And I hold on to clothing while way past the point where they are are not wearable. My shoes get holes before I buy new ones and it is not necessary anymore. I'm not rich but dang. I can have decent shoes. Just can't get rid of the mindset. The flip side of that is I fix things instead of buying new. Actual food stamps that look like postage stamps. I thought that was how everyone bought food. Also, stocking up on V05 shampoo like we were preppers. It apparently goes on sale once a year. The first time I remember consciously realizing that we were poor was when I was 6 and went to the doctor because an eye infection had turned into sepsis. When asked who our family doctor was and I had to reply the emergency room. The reason the question was asked was because the PA a year a week earlier had misdiagnosed it as Pinky and sent us home saying everything would get better in a week or so. Actually I had an infected cut on my cornea and it was spreading into my eye socket and bloodstream. The doctor was incredulous that nobody had even actually looked at the eye yet as within half a second of using that eye light scope thingy doctors used to look in eyes and ears showed him what was wrong. I mean, I knew we didn't have much money a good while before that, but that was the first time I realized just how crippling poverty really is. That because my parents didn't have enough green paper slips in a bank that I might lose my eye, and that the lack of those little green slips was going to have a long term negative impact on my future. Poor is relative, but never buying a brand name of anything if there was an off brand option that was 5 cents cheaper, even if it was far inferior. Oh, I buy brand, on eBay, we are getting ready for a trip to Colorado for Christmas, and I'm buying second hand snow pants for our Floridian children, they can have the good crap, but only used. Using the neighbor's hose when they weren't home to fill buckets to flush the toilet, our power usually stayed on. My mom worried the neighbors would call CPS if the lights were off, so they let other utilities go first. Like others here no AC heat or much food. Every winter I hoped for snow so my dad could make snow cream. Fresh snow, sugar and milk. Such a treat as a kid. Having your windows ice over on the inside of your room because there was no heat. I used to spend so much time scratching off that frost on my bedroom window in the early morning right after I woke up. Weird little poverty game for a kid to play. A single kerosene heater that would stink smoke the whole house out on the few nights a year we could afford to run it. Sleeping on the bathroom floor in summer because it was too dangerous to sleep on the balcony. Bologna and tomato sauce sandwiches three times a day. One pair of hand-me-down shoes that I was never allowed wear unless it was a special occasion. The only item in our house that used electricity was the clock radio in my parents' bedroom, and it only got turned on when they went to bed. Christmas consisted of receiving the clothes and school supplies for the next year. All your friends at school aren't hungry and share their lunch with you and you never work out why. You discover chocolate milk and it literally blows your mind. McDonald's comes to town and three years later a friend's dad is driving a bunch of kids home from the game and asks you what you want. And you say nothing. Thanks because you know better than to ask for anything. And because you have literally no idea what they actually sell there. Entire weekend spent wandering around town looking for coins so that you can get 50c worth of mixed lollies. Regular visits from the government lady who asks you a bunch of weird questions. Mum crying all the time. You get $10 from somewhere and it never even occurs to you to spend it. You give it to your parents. You never ever want for anything. Because there is no point. Laundromats were so good for change. I could get a couple dollars checking inside dryers and under machines. Not needing much, and then thrift store shopping when we did need. A couple times a year we would go visit family in bigger cities and be so excited to hit up the nicer thrift stores because that's where the rich people donated their clothes. I still shop at thrift stores for a lot of things. The police would come into our neighborhood, fill up the block with their cars, open their trunks full of toys and give them out to all the kids. Realized after we moved that I stopped seeing this phenomenon and I asked my mom why they didn't do it in our new neighborhood. Just straight up. Oh yeah, it was a sort of charity thing because we were poor and our neighbors were poor. Everyone there was just poor. That is actually really wholesome. 1. Bread out of toaster and syrup equals French toast. 2. Stale potato chips and ketchup equals French fries. I didn't realize until I was older that toast with cinnamon and butter wasn't actually french toast. When my parents made rice for dinner, 
I didn't realize it at the time, but looking back on it, I now realize when I ate a bowl of rice with butter. Things were tight for my parents. I didn't think twice about it. We are all doing okay now. We used to have butter noodles. Just spaghetti and some butter. Or country crock. We are all doing okay now. Too. Glad you are as well. Still being very hungry after lunch time in school. I remember having some pretzels and a small sandwich while the other kids had lunchables and cookies and all that junk. I also was recently reminiscing with a childhood friend of mine and I mentioned how I miss my old house and she said I don't. Your house was kinda dumpy I took that like a dagger. I know what you mean. I had pretty much the same childhood. I always thought the other kids were crazy for complaining about how grody the school lunch was. It was the best food I would get. Since at home, it was always spaghetti with watered down sauce and foo much garlic salt added. Or, pickle and pimento loaf. My mom smiling and telling us everything's fine and then sneaking off to the bathroom or her bedroom to cry because we'd ask her insensitive questions relating to our financial situation. Being the only kid who didn't have a snack during snack time in elementary school. The teachers kept a little snack jar for me and a few other kids, but I never took any because I felt bad. When I was a kid, I was bought a high-end name brand pair of jeans for Christmas by rich relatives. Everyone at school was jealous. I didn't even know the brand, because we never had brand name anything. Jeans were just whatever fit that I could find at the thrift store. I was an only child till I was 11, so I didn't have anyone to get hand-me-downs from. <laughs> Sharing a room and bathroom with my dad and sister. We spent a little over a year in this arrangement. Had just a little 14 inch TV. Bunk beds on the side of the room and a queen bed in the middle with one big dresser and a couple tubs we used for clothes. I really thought it was fun all the time I got to spend around my dad. Wasn't necessarily poor my entire childhood. But looking back I know this was taxing for a father to take on by himself. Now he's living it up. 15 stroke 10 good dad. It was about 2008 when me and my brothers moved in with my mom. She managed to get a tiny tiny apartment for all four of us. Tiny kitchen. Small bathrooms. We were grateful that we had our own place. The apartment didn't have cable. Or at least we didn't. So when my brothers and I had to get up for school. My mom would plug in an old radio and turn it to the Donnie Simpson show at 7am in the morning. It gave us our daily news and weather updates. Music and everything we needed to know. Just like a regular news station on TV would. Cut to 2010, and my mom finally got a better job, so she was able to pay for cable. We had gotten so used to the radio that even though we had the ability to watch the news, we still wanted to hear the radio. Being hungry all the time. Looking forward to free school lunches. Government cheese and honey. Thinking that McDonald's was a treat. Most of my memories of that time revolve around food or the lack of it. When we were poor, my mom made a lot of ham hock and beans. When we were really poor, she saved the ham hock for the next batch. The house we lived in at that time was poorly insulated and was in a brutally cold climate. The wood stove could only keep up with the living room. During the winter, if it was below freezing, the whole family slept in the living room. This was in Kansas in the late 70s and early 80s. My stepdad bought dog food in bulk because it was cheaper without the bag. Stepdad went on the run from the police, growing weed in the corn I Ike. My mom gave up and moved us all to California where her parents lived. Early the 1st of December woman, four kids, and a dog in a 74 Corolla wagon with everything we owned on the roof or in a one-wheeled Sears Allstate trailer from approximately 1942. It had a caster type wheel with two hitches, lol. It pulled the bumper off in the middle of the night in haze, ks. My mom begged a welding shop to fix it for $10. They did it for free. I was 11 and had to troubleshoot and de-ice the carburetor climbing through the Rockies. After many adventures involving a puppy on the road for a week, we arrived at my grandparents. Grandpa said it looked like the Grapes of Wrath. You should write a book. I would seriously buy it. Powdered milk and expired beans. Yes I was an adult before I realized that real milk tastes good. My mom always mixed powdered milk in a regular milk jug and we just didn't know any better. My dad was a great gardener though. Paying rent at 15. We were homeless for 6 months. 
Luckily we had a camper to stay in at a campground but we made do. There was a basketball court, a pond, and a lot of rich kids. Kinda made me feel like crap when these kids had like, a second home that they go to a month out of the year. And I'm in a camper with my cokehead mom, alcoholic stepdad, and brother that's now on the run with three warrants. I guess I'm the only one that's somewhat normal. We never really had food either. Afterwards we moved into low income housing and would lose power all the time cause they'd rather get fricked up than pay bills. I came home from school to see my TV, my PS2, games, gone. They pawned them to pay rent. I was working at the time and I had to pay to get it back. I freaking hated it. I had a girlfriend and would always go to her house. Basically came home to sleep and that's it. I'd try to stay out of the house as much as possible. And was super embarrassed when I'd have to tell her that I had no power. Or food in the fridge. Or a phone. But now. I work my butt off. My wife as well. And we get crap done. We're not rich but we're comfortable and we have the things we want. And are thankful for every bit if it because she came up the same way. Lay away at Walmart for big spending times of year, like for back to school clothes. No way could my parents afford to cloth three growing children in one shopping trip. Oyster crackers were a delicacy. You'd only rarely get them in the mission food boxes around where I lived, and when you did, everyone was fighting over them. Finally something other than powdered milk, generic wheat cereal, oatmeal, and dry beans. Going to hilariously underfunded and crappy schools, worst elementary school in the province represent, and all the issues that came with that. For example, I went to schools in the mid-2000s that didn't have computers for students and teachers often wouldn't stick around for the entire year. It wasn't until I started using Reddit when I found out that people who don't go to crappy schools had teachers who push them into post-secondary, whereas my teachers seemed to have given up on us and would actively discourage us from going into post-secondary. Knowing what we would have for lunches and dinners 100% of the time because it was always the same. Being extra careful with consumables because if you were wasteful your parents would get really angry. Or worse, just start crying. Going to visit grandparents and all their church friends would overload us with toys and clothes. All of which were old, outdated, and smelled funny. But we took home anyways. Hand me downs from literally everyone. Then mom sewing and hemming to make them sort of fit. I don't really remember shopping for clothes until I graduated high school. Same. I have a shopping habit of clothes because of this. Always getting hand me downs. I randomly splurged to feel like I have something new. Walk in closet full of clothes with tags still on them. I occasionally go through my clothes and find something new I forgot I bought. Feels great. Be Comfort food is still ramen noodles with an egg in it. No account. Odd things I figured out when I was older. I didn't realize you could buy milk at the grocery store. Milk came from the farmer once a week and you had to go get it. For some reason I thought white bread was something you only got in restaurants. I was an adult before I figured out my mom could buy more wheat bread on food stamps. Veggies came from grandpa's garden. Because I am old. Government cheese. Really bad home haircuts. I didn't have my hair cut at an actual place until I became an adult. Turning down a side road when a police car was nearby because our tags were out. Watching other kids getting to go on all the field trips and not getting to go watch the talent shows and plays at school that cost a dollar to get into. I sat in that empty classroom a lot. Having to announce every morning in roll call that I'd take the free lunch tray that day. Thanks. Never having snacks at snack time. Wearing donated clothes and having another kid announce that the shirt I was wearing used to be hers. A kid dropped a dime on the floor of the cafeteria and made me pick it up because I needed it and she didn't. Just constantly bullying about my clothes and house. You have been visited by the ingenious Joe. Comment brain so you always see the glass half full. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.